Hey guys, I hope you're all well and you had a great weekend. Um, in this video, it's my first video, well, second video, but first like DIY one, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make a quarter zip like this one. Um, yeah, you can have it in two colors or just one color. I chose to have two, it's a bit more of a fun contrast. Um, it's a cropped style, so it's got like, I'll try and show you. It's got like elastic around the waist, so it's, it sort of sits at your waist. Then it's got a little toggle that you can pull to tighten it. I just think it's a bit more modern and millennial and a bit more fun than just the loose baggy camper style ones. So one of the things that you will need is like a, a loose fitting garment that you already have that is like not tight on you, but is the fit that you'd want a jumper to be. So I've got this, um, it's like, a, it is a cord zip already actually, I think. Um, so I've got this, it's just from Aldi, uh, which I based the pattern that I used for this jumper off. Um, if you find one that, if you find one that is sort of the, sits on you the perfect way that you want it to sit, then that's probably the best way to start. So you're going to want to lay your fabric out nice and flat, making sure there's no crinkles, and then place your garment that you've chosen onto the fabric and lay it nice and flat so that all the seams are not gathered in any way or distorted and then your garment onto your piece of fabric and mark around your garment and then when you cut it out you're going to want to add a centimeter on either side of the line that you've traced around your garment just to allow for seam allowances so it fits like the garment that you've got so now that we have our pattern pieces all prepared, it's time to cut it out of our fleece. The amount of fabric required is based on how big this is going to be. And that is just lie it out and see how many meters exactly you're going to need, just so that you don't fall short. I'd always go just a little bit more than is necessary. And you can always turn those scraps into something else that's going to be useful rather than just chucking it away. So I've got these two fabrics. They're both from eBay, just one of the eBay sellers. They're anti-peel, just polar fleece fabric. You're gonna need to decide which fabric color is going where. So I think I'm going to have white as the main body and then green on the top. So that's how I'm gonna cut it mine out. This little bit here is just like the stopper and just in case it's not quite the length that you need it to be to reach the middle section so to do that you're going to need a zipper foot and your trusty sewing machine now to prove that you really don't need anything expensive or exciting i have got this which is a really old sewing machine embellished with lovely stickers made by my little sister at some point so you know you don't you don't need to think that you need like the top market up market most expensive sewing machine to make any of these things even if they're like thicker fabrics or whatever so what you're going to do is you're going to get your like scrap piece of fleece it's literally maybe like three inches by two inches and you're going to attach it onto the bottom of the zipper and you're just going to pin it if you need a pin you're going to pin it and 
into place and then sew a straight line. So I forgot to mention, but I'll just mention quickly. If your sewing machine finds it quite hard to go over zips, then just go really slowly. And if your knee, if you think your needle is going to break, then just use the, whatever this bit is, <laughs> the turny bit at the end of your sewing machine and just ease it through. Okay, so once that is sewn, not particularly straight on my behalf, you're just going to fold it out and you're going to top stitch it across where you've just sewn in a nice straight stitch. Okay, now that's done, you can just put that to the side for a second. So if you get the, the zipper placket part that you cut out, uh, right sides together, and you are going to sew across the top part. So you're just going to sew across this bit. You don't need to worry about this bit down here because it's going to get sewn into this seam so you know it doesn't you don't need to worry about it and then it looks a bit like this and you're just going to clip the corner so that when you turn it the other way around you know it folds all right so now you're just going to poke it out and now if you want you can top stitch it but there's you know not really much point in doing that because Luckily with this fabric, it doesn't move particularly much. And this is gonna be on a fold. So this bit down here is on a, it's, it's folded. So it's gonna hold itself pretty well. But what I would do is I would fold it wrong sides together. So this is exactly how it's gonna stay. And you're just gonna sew a basting stitch along these two raw edges to keep them together before you attach it onto the main body. So for the next bit, the pieces that you're going to need are the two front bits that go one here and one here and you're going to need the back panel as well okay so what you're going to need to do is you're going to do right sides together of the back and the front so get your back piece and then get your two front pieces and stitch them together at the shoulder seams and then pin those in place and just sew them at a um, one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, so now that you've got this bit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish these, these raw edges and then we're gonna press them towards the back of the bodice. If you have an overlocker, then overlock the edges. If not, then just use a bigger length zigzag stitch. Okay, so now that, that is nice and overlocked on the seam on the seams you're going to fold it the right side out and press the overlocked seam towards the back bodice and you're going to top stitch on the top about I don't know what measurement is I use it I just use it on the edge of my sewing machine foot but it's going to be like two millimeters away from where the actual seam is all the way along the top just to encase it so it's nice and flat when you're wearing it to get is both of your collar pieces just get one so far and what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach it right sides together all the way around the neck neck band whatever you call it also I overcut my neck band collar piece just in case <laughs> collar piece just really try and not stretch it loads, otherwise it's, when you sew it, it's gonna like be like this up around your neck and you don't really want that. Unless obviously that's the style that you're after, then feel free. Pin it all into place, then sew around at the same one centimeter seam allowance. Just when you're sewing, be careful of the shoulder seams because it's on a curve, it can sometimes get a bit bunched up. So just maybe lift it up halfway through and just check that you haven't caught any fabric that you might be intending to. Just go ahead and check that you've caught all of the fabric and you haven't accidentally folded under any that you didn't want. And then unpin it. And what it should look like at this stage is Like this so obviously I'm cut off the excess that you don't need anymore just make sure it's nice and flat and straight and in line with that front part of the second bit of 
I don't know what you call it, bodice, jumper bodice part. So just go ahead and cut that bit. And now you have something that looks a little bit like this. So it's starting to look a little bit like a fleece, which is great. Okay, so the next thing that you want to, you're gonna to want to do is make sure that this is nice and flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off this little tiny bit just so that it's nice and straight and even. And then get your zipper placket and your zip and right sides together you're going to attach the right side of the zip and so it goes body facing zip and then zipper placket and you want the bit that you sewed up on the, the zipper placket to be up at the top because you're going to be there's this is going to be folded down so it's nice and neat and you don't have raw edges you need to make sure that your zip is not coming right up to the top because that's going to be folded down anyway. So you need it to be sitting about there when you actually go to pin it. So just bear that in mind. And the same with the zipper placket. You want that to be facing, to be sitting, sorry, about there. So that when this is folded down, it's all nice and flat. And the other thing is make sure that you fold this bit of the zip, the top bit of the zip, inwards. So it's not going to hang out of the side when you actually go to sew it. Like, oh, other thing, when you sew it, when you are pinning it, make sure you catch the pin and this seam facing upwards towards the collar as you don't want it facing down and that will all be explained later on. Okay, so now that we've done that, what you're going to do is snip down this part so it's nice and level with the front bit of the bodice. And then we're going to go finish this seam, so you can either zigzag stitch it or overlock it. I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side of the zipper, but this time without the zipper placket. start to look a little bit like this which should look like this just clip off some of the loose threads so that you don't have to worry them worry about them later on and then the next part you're going to need your inside part of your collar and, and your bias tape so you're going to finish this long edge only one edge with bias binding all the way along so, for those of you who don't know how to use bias binding, it comes like this. It's a piece of fabric that is cut on the bias, so not on the grain. So it's got a nice bit of stretch on it, and it is fold ironed flat on two sides. So to attach the bias binding, you want to open up one side of the bias binding. So unfold it, so it's like that. And then you're going to attach the bit that you've just unfolded onto the edge and pin it into place. And then you're going to sew along the folded line and then we'll just do that bit for now and then I'll show you the next bit. Okay, so now that you've sewn along that folded edge, what you're going to do is fold the bias binding over and pin it into place. You want the folded edge to sit on the line of stitching that you've just sewn and then pin into place and then you're gonna to top stitch along the top to secure it. So now that your bias binding is nicely attached, just trim off the excess and any loose threads. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to pin the inside part of your collar right sides together to the outside part of your collar and you are going to sew up here and all across the top, so just the three sides, leaving this bias binding part. Um, I 
did initially top stitch my zip down into place but then I realised that when I was going to come to sew this bit it wouldn't encase the zip in it so I did have to unpick all of that so just don't make the same mistake. <laughs> Once that is all sewn, just clip that corner so that when you turn it out, it'll be nice and easy to turn. And then fold it right sides out. And then we're just going to pin this top part nicely down and I'm gonna, just going to top stitch that before I even sew this. going to attach one of Paige Joanna's labels into the back of mine and to do that I'll just tuck it in here when I show you how to attach this part onto there. quarter zip all done just go ahead and get your front lower part of the, the pattern okay so get your front bottom part and open up your jumper and then across the top part you're going to attach that onto the bottom of your front and just pin into place, make sure that it's right sides together. And then we're going to sew that at a one centimetre seam allowance. And if you have got a lighter fabric, or since we're just turning onto the different um, colour now, I would change up our threads so that we don't get massive stitch lines, which won't be so attractive. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to finish this seam and then we're going to press it towards the bottom part. Okay, once that's done, just trim off the loose bit of thread. And then fold it out. And make sure you're pressing this, the top part, which is my green part, down towards the white and then we will top stitch all along the white bit. Okay, so now that the front part is all finished, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to the back. Okay, so just snip off those straggling bits of thread. And then top stitch the green, well my green part, down onto the white bit by just folding it that way. Okay, so those bits are all neatly sewn together. And then you're going to fold right sides together of the front and the back pieces. And then pin and sew them along their side seams. If one side is a bit longer than the other, then um, make sure that you're measuring your, make sure you start pinning under the armpit so at least that one is exactly where it needs to be. And then if one's shorter or one's longer than the other, then just trim it down so that they're both nice and even. So we're just gonna sew up these side seams again at one centimeter seam allowance and then we'll finish off the raw edge. Okay, now that, that is all finished then Light it nice and flat and trim off the excess if it's overhanging a little bit at the bottom just so that it's all nice and even. Cool. Right, and then we're going to top stitch down the side bits. You don't have to, I'm just going to do it just because I don't like this irritating bit. And when we put the elastic in, it will just be easier if it's top stitched down. 
I think. But you don't have to do that, but I'm gonna do it. Cool. So once that's done, just turn that right sides out. Looking fairly snazzy. Right, and we'll just leave that to one side a second. And then you wanna grab your sleeve parts. Right, so with your sleeve parts, you are going to fold them in half just to measure, just to see where your, the top part of the sleeve is going to come and meet this seam up here. And then just pop a pin in where it is that you folded it in half. It doesn't have to be an exact size because it's got a fair amount of stretch to it so you can adjust it if it's feeling a bit saggy in an area. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your sleeve pattern and you're going to fold it in half right sides together and neatly pin it or not pin it however talented you're feeling and then we're gonna sew down that at a one centimeter seam allowance again so just finishing off those raw edges you don't need to top stitch these or anything because that'd be incredibly difficult and they just lie flat anyway they're going to be in a part where there's a lot of movement so just leave them Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is have, turn your main body inside out so that you can have right sides together when you insert the sleeve. So we're just gonna turn these sleeves the right way around. Right, make sure that you still have that pin right up at the top where it was folded. And then you are going to insert them, well, one at a time into your armhole and then where your the seam is here right down the side you're going to hold that and find the seam of the sleeve and you're going to match them up and then pin them into place because those are gonna they have to be there so that's an easy one to do and then you're gonna bring the pinned part right up to the shoulder seam and pin that bit in place as well. And then you're just going to pin the rest of the sleeve right sides together to the main body. So once that's all pinned in, you are going to sew around it at one centimeter seam allowance as per and just really carefully watching that you're not catching any of the armhole sleeve fabric because it is on a curve so it does make it a little bit trickier next thing is just to finish off these armband edges with an overlocker again a little bit harder because it is on a curve but just gently feed it around so repeat that with the other sleeve and then we're just going to turn it inside out And you have a forming jumper. <laughs> How very snazzy. So just hem round your sleeve. So try it on, see where it fits on your wrist, make sure it's exactly where you want it to be. And then hem it all the way around. I fold it down once and then fold it down again and pin. And then we're just gonna sew two two rows of straight stitch all the way around okay so now that the sleeves are all hemmed and lovely we're going to move on to the bottom part of the jumper so hopefully you would have tried it on by now and seen if the fit is where you want it to be remember it is going to be risen up a bit because of the elastic okay so what you need to do is i know that this is the wrong way around but since the hem is going to be folded twice so that you can fit the elastic in and so you don't have a raw edge, to work out where you need to put your eyelets for the elastic to go through, just fold it twice and sort of visually mark out where you need your 
uh, eyelets to go. So I'm just going to look, try and find where the centre is and then pop two little marks for where you need to punch the holes for your eyelets. Once you have punctured the holes, then pull out those little annoying dotty parts, place in your eyelet, so what you're going to do is pop the back onto the eyelet and then press it into place. Once you have done that, what we're going to do is fold the hem down once and then twice, pin it into place all the way around, leaving an inch gap uh, right here at the front so that we can thread through the elastic. So bring it to where it would want to be sat on your waist and then add maybe five inches onto that. So now that you've hemmed the bottom part of your jumper, you are going to get your piece of elastic that you've just cut, post it through one of the eyelets and out the other side, and then get a nappy pin and attach it on to the end of the elastic. And then you're going to thread that through the whole of the casing that you have now hemmed around the bottom part of the jumper. Thread it, the elastic all the way around, pull through the nappy pin and just leave it there a second. The elastic that you'd already poked through the eyelet, what you're going to do is making sure that this is the facing the right way up. You want to squish down on your toggle and pop it through the front once you've attached your toggle then thread the elastic back through the other the other eyelet Now you're going to tie both of these pieces together, so the one that's attached to the nappy pin and the one that you've just threaded through. Now, I'm no genius at knots and, you know, do whatever knot you know is going to hold strong enough, but I've used this in all my other ones and they're perfectly fine. Snip off the excess elastic. Pull it through your jumper. And then what you're going to do is just to literally finish everything off is just sew down that hem where you'd left the gap to thread through the elastic. keep going but uh yeah hopefully i hope to see you back here 
for my next video. I've got many planned. Well, um, thank you for sticking till the end of the video. Uh, thank you for staying this whole time. I hopefully you have followed along or you're planning to make this jumper. And if you do, please tag me at Bella Grace on Instagram. And Bella has got four L's just to be difficult. Um, yeah, please let me know if you try it or you try any of the other videos that I haven't yet. But hopefully if you've watched this, then they will be up and ready for you to follow along. Um, if you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see or things that you'd like to make but don't know how to, then I'll try my best to try and to try and make it in a video so that you can make it for yourselves. If you'll follow along for my next videos, I know this was the first one so it was never going to be perfect but I hope it made sense and if you're not sure on something that I spoke about or uh, a step that wasn't clear enough then please let me know and I'll try and write it up or link it somewhere so that I can or just screenshot the pattern or anything. Just give me a message if something's not completely clear. But yeah, thank you for sticking around and watching till the end if you have. And yeah, go enjoy yourself. Have a nice day. Thanks. Bye.